In this video, we're doing a full 24 volt upgrade on the ANIT A8 and we're starting right now. Hello, my name is Daniel. Welcome to the Crosslink channel. I'm here to help you being more successful with 3D printing. And if you're here for the first time, subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss anything. So in one of my last videos, I did a partial 24 volt upgrade to the ANIT A8. So what does partial mean? It means I'm only running the Anycubic Ultra base on 24 volt. So the heat bed is running on 24 volt. Everything else is still running on 12 volt using a 24 to 12 volt step down converter. However, I already replaced the power supply. And in this video, we're going to do the whole 24 volt experience. We're gonna replace everything to run on 24 volts instead of having a partial setup. So why would you want to start upgrading your printer to 24 volts in the first place? One main reason is you get better safety. Why is that? So 24 volt is a higher voltage, but the current on the cables is actually going to be lower. So they're not going to be heating up that much. So the danger of some cable burning through is lower at 24 volts. The second reason why I want to run this printer on 24 volts is I want to have a faster heat up time. So you might want to say, uh, how is it possible? How is it going to heat up faster if there's less current running through the bed and also the heating cartridge? Well, that's one of the assumptions that I've done is I've seen 24 volt printers and everybody claims that these printers are heating up faster. So we're going to see if this is really true. So let's start quickly with the 12 volt setup that everybody probably has when he starts with the ANIT A8. So the ANIT A8 comes with a 12 volt power supply and a mainboard that normally only supports 12 volt. So the mainboard that comes with your printer is probably this one with the green connectors and that's gonna be one board up to version 1.5 that's gonna support 12 volt. And then everything on your printer is gonna run on 12 volt probably so the fans the bed and also the hot end. However, there's already a new main board available, which is the version 1.7 that should support 24 volts because it's written on the main board. I actually never tried it out yet. So this is what's going to be installed on this printer. Now our target setup is gonna be a full 24 volt printer running everything on 24 volt, including the main board, the fans and the heat bed and the hot end. And so you're gonna replace basically everything that has to do with electronics on this printer except the motors, so why not the motors? The motors should work with 24 volts. I'm not entirely sure about the specifications of the motors that come with the printer, but I'm just gonna risk it. Some people also say you should stick with the original heat bed. It works with 24 volts. I'm not so sure about that. I didn't risk that. I wanna go with the 24 volt ultra base, but you can try that out. So some people also claim that you can keep the original heating cartridge and just run it on 24 volt. I'm not willing to risk that. So I have bought a new one, which is rated for 24 volts. So what's left is basically all the fans. You will definitely have to replace those fans because they are definitely not working with 24 volts. They are gonna spin up to such a high speed and probably gonna burn through if you don't replace them. Then of course, we're gonna replace the original power supply. I've done that already, but you're gonna left with a spare 12 volt power supply. Probably gonna use this for some LED powering. And also, I mean, your decision. It's your decision if you wanna go with another heat bed or if you wanna keep it. I think it's probably not going to uh, burn up in flames, but it's maybe safer to get one that's rated for 24 watts. So let's start with the assembly process. What I'm going to do first, I'm gonna dismantle everything on this printer that is gonna be replaced. And then I'm gonna install step-by-step -step the new parts. Okay, so let's make sure that this is not plugged in. So we're gonna start with the power supply first. Um, before you replace the old power supply with the 24 volt power supply, make sure that you understand the terminals on the new power supply, how they are going to be connected to your main power. Um, what I noticed is that the original ANIT A8 power supply has a different layout of the terminal connectors compared to other power supplies. So make sure you don't confuse those terminals. Normally the power cables that comes with a printer don't have cable shoes so you have to screw these bare cable ends to the power supply which I don't recommend for safety reasons. So make sure that for all the cables you use cable shoes and using this is very easy using a crimp tool. It's gonna be just a matter of seconds. So what you can see here on the right hand side I have connected my new power supply to the 224 volt main power. 
So these three connectors are doing that. And here on the left hand side, we have our 24 volt outputs. And I'm running these two cables to the MOSFETs on the other side of the printer and also to the main board, which is going to support 24 volts. So if you look on the electronic side of the printer, I'm still using my MOSFETs. I can highly recommend using MOSFETs. Um, however, this main board is probably capable of running the 24 volt parts of this printer without MOSFETs, but I still prefer using MOSFETs just for the safety. So what I've done here, I basically have running these two cables into the first MOSFET and then I have two shorter cables connecting this first MOSFET's input to the input of the second MOSFET. So I have distributed power onto these two MOSFETs. Then on the main board, I have a separate pair of PAL cables coming from the PAL supply to the main board, just for redundancy reasons. Normally, this whole printer is just powered by two cables coming to the main board, and then from there, everything else is powered. But I would prefer this for safety reasons. So let's talk about the new mainboard. So this is the 24 mm mainboard that I've already installed, but if you still have the old mainboard, to replace this with the new one is a very simple step. You just have to unplug every cable and disconnect every cable, mount the new mainboard, and then connect all the cables again. It's the same exact layout than the old mainboard, so there is no confusion possible. So the only thing left for me is now to replace the heating cartridge and also the fans with the 24 volt versions. So to do that, um, unfortunately, I have to unwrap this cable here uh, and disconnect all the cables first so I can get actually to the heating cartridge cable and plug it out and replace it with the new heating cartridge. So now I'm ready to remove the heating cartridge and you will notice that there's a very tiny grub screw at the uh, heating block um, that you have to release a little bit so to get this heating cartridge out. So I just noticed that I cannot release a grub screw because there's probably some rest of filament on the grub screw and also on this heating cartridge that's gonna prevent this from coming out. Uh, but I can't turn on the printer anymore because I've already in partially installed 24 volts but the fans are still 12 volt. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take a heat gun and gonna heat up this hot end here and to be able to release those parts. Okay, this looks good. So what I have to do now is unwrap this captain tape because we have this little temperature sensor here which we're going to keep and just replace the heating cartridge and we have to make sure that we have the same kind of distance uh, so the temperature sensor can slide in into the heat block uh, in parallel to the new heating cartridge. I'm gonna take the, yeah, a brown 20 centimeters of captain tape and I'm gonna wrap it hopefully I'm gonna manage to wrap this around so now it's time to unmount both fans so the extruder fan and the filament cooling fan so as you can see the new fans that I've ordered unfortunately have pretty short cables so I have to solder in some connectors to use the old cables and extend them uh, that makes it easier also to swap out the fans later if they ever start to make noise. So that's good. So you only need some soldering skills um, and put these connectors to your old cables and the new fans. Final step, mount the fans back to the printer and connect the cables back to the main board. So we're pretty much done now. Everything has been replaced. Everything is on 24 volts now. I'm doing first the heat up time test and then let's do a first test print to see whether the printer is still working or not. Just have to clean up the mess a little bit so nothing gets in the way. So now I'm starting the nozzle heat up test and we can see that in, from the beginning it makes the impression that the 12 volt printer is able to keep up with the 24 volt printer. However, if we wait a little bit and until we're around a minute or so, we can see that the 24 volt printer is already having some speed advantage. It's already almost there and it's gonna reach its target temperature at around one minute and 12 or 13 seconds. Whereas the 12 volt printer is still struggling to heat up and it's gonna reach its final temperature at around one minute and 45. So it's, it's still, um, 
30 seconds difference. Now coming to the bad heat up test, we can see that right from the first moment, the 24 volt printer is already leaping ahead pretty fast. So it's, it's already accelerating fast in temperature and around 1 minute and 20, 23, it's gonna reach its target temperature already, whereas the 12 volt printer is still struggling at 40 degrees and uh, very, very slow in terms of heating up. And it's gonna reach its target temperature at around 3 minute and 10. So you can see that the 24 volt version is really faster. So what I've done after checking out the temperatures, I've printed out a new mainboard cover because I need a new fan on the mainboard uh, and it has a different diameter. So I need a new cover. It was a perfect test just to see if printing works and it printed out pretty well. I'm gonna mount that and then we should be ready for long-term printing, but I'm already happy with the quality. So one comment from my last 24 volt partial upgrade was that somebody claimed that running on 24 volts, the motors are getting much hotter. I can't really confirm that. I felt during printing this part, the motor was pretty hot. So especially the Y-axis motor was pretty hot, but I cannot tell you if this is hotter than on 12 volts. So I'm gonna do some comparison with my other printer that still runs on 12 volt. I'm gonna update you in the comments section or in the description of the video if I saw any differences there. And maybe this is a part and a topic for another video. That concludes the 24 volt upgrade. I hope you like it. Uh, yeah, go to the comment section, ask your questions. I'll be there to answer them. And uh, if you like this content, like and subscribe. Go to the Patreon page if you want to support me creating more content for you. And see you in the next one. Bye bye.